and that's the uh, teachings concerning generational curses, yeah. right? That's not even supposed to be mentioned among, especially among Christians. Yeah. I mean, because uh, first off, if you're a Christian, you got no generation. Right. Right. You, you go back one generation, Jesus. Amen. Ain't no curses there. Yeah. Amen? So, now listen, my, my earthly dad was an alcoholic. I saw it. I saw what it did to a family. I saw what it did to our family. Uh, when I was nine years old, I made a vow to God. Same year I got saved. Made a vow to God. I would never touch alcohol. Why? Because I saw what it did. I've never broken that vow. And guess what? I'm not an alcoholic. Why? Because I've never taken the bottle and put it to my lips. Isn't that simple? So it's real simple. And that's exactly what Ezekiel 18 tells us. That if a, a son sees his dad sin and decides not to do it, then his dad's sins will not come upon him. Well, guess what? Now he says every soul, you'll see when we get in there, that every soul that sins answers for themselves. And so you have to realize, uh, if you're an alcoholic, it ain't because your daddy was, it's because you are. Because you decided to put that bottle to your mouth and do those things. Now, once you break that one time, it gets easier to break it the next time. And it gets easier and easier. That's why many things you should have never broke in the, in, the, in the beginning. So if you're going to kill something, you have to make that vow or make that stand and decide to kill it and then never break that stand. Never break it. I was in the nightclubs just like everybody else was. All the, my friends, everybody else. I was around all the alcohol. My parents owned a bar right here in Dallas. That's where I learned to play pool. And I'm talking about from the time I was about 12 to 17, about 16, 17. I was in there almost every day. And there was always alcohol around. I could have had it any time I wanted. It was at our home. I could have snuck around and got it. And yet I knew once I made that vow at nine, guess what? I've never even been tempted. Never even tempted. Why? Because I killed that thing at nine. See, the reason you have problems and struggles is because you don't kill it. You just play with it or you knock it out or you hide it back and you run back over there every now and then. No, you have to kill it and then you have to learn how to hate it. And when you hate it, you're never tempted to do it. You, you only do the things you like. Right? So if you're doing something, it's because you like it. Right? Oh, no, I hate it. No, you don't. If you hate it, you wouldn't do it. Right? Now, there's things that I don't know if I hate them or not. I still don't do them. Right? Like vegetables. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't know. People say, have you ever tried it? Nope. Say, do you like that? Nope. How do you know? I've never tried it. I don't know. <laughs> but I don't want to try it. I'm good. Right? And I have stood firm against that. Okay? <laughs> so... I, I'm, I'm in my 60th year of a vegetable fast. <laughs> so, okay. so yeah. Amen. Amen. So, if you have children, you might want to put your fingers in their ears while I'm talking about this. No. <laughs> no. Um, but there, it comes down to the fact that you have to decide what you're going to do and what you're not. And then you have to decide what's going to have power over you. And so... If you don't want something to have power over you, you have to, listen, you'll either be, you will either dominate or you'll be dominated. What you tolerate will dominate you. So you can't tolerate it. You have, you have to decide yay or nay. It's that simple. Now, um, where are we at time-wise? Okay, I'm good. Now, let's look at some of these. And, and remember, I'm going back because, as I said, all of these things, they're, they're psychological and have been brought into the church now from outside sources. They were not practiced in the early church. Do you get that? 